Whether you're at a chilly football game or on a wintry adventure, it's important to stay warm. Puffy coats and fuzzy hats are great, but you might also need something to warm your hands up, and that's where this activity comes in. Today I'm going to use some chemistry knowledge to make homemade hand warmers. For this experiment, you'll need iron filings, calcium chloride, and some super absorbent jelly crystals. You'll also need a small cup of water and a plastic bag that seals shut. A few measuring spoons might not hurt, too. First, add a quarter teaspoon of your super absorbent jelly crystals to your cup of water, then wait for them to soak in the water. This could take a while, so if you need to burn some time, you could try another experiment in your kit. We have a few that we pre-soaked and dyed blue, so they're easier to see on our blue table. Oh, man. Once the crystals have absorbed to their full size, you can add them to your plastic bag, and then add one tablespoon of iron filings. Now I've got some dirty jiggles. Next, add one and a half tablespoons of calcium chloride. Now it's time to squeeze the outside of the bag to mush everything together. And once everything is nice and mixed up, you can seal the bag. And it's already getting hot. I can feel it. I can feel it. So why do you think this experiment worked? Do you think the iron filings, the calcium chloride, or the jelly crystals were the most important ingredient. Hot, hotchy, hot, 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 hot. In this activity, I added three main ingredients to my bag, calcium chloride, iron filings, and water, which was stored in those jelly crystals. The chemical reactions between those ingredients are what make everything work. First, there's the reaction between calcium chloride and water. Like the name says, calcium chloride is made up of two things, calcium and chlorine. When it comes in contact with water, it reacts to make two new substances, calcium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. These products aren't that important for your hand warmers, though. What's really important is that this reaction is exothermic. It releases heat. But that wasn't the only important reaction here. The other one was between water and iron, specifically the iron in those iron filings. When iron touches water, it makes rust, just like the stuff you might find on old tools. And that reaction is also exothermic. When I combined all of these ingredients in my bag, the reactions produce a lot of heat, which kept everything nice and toasty. For the record, this is pretty similar to how the hand warmers you would buy at a store work. You just get the satisfaction of knowing you made them yourself. Once you're done with your hand warmers, make sure you throw away the plastic bag without opening it. The reaction between calcium chloride and water does produce that acid, hydrochloric acid, which could irritate your skin. Now, in this activity, you might have made some great hand warmers, but here's the thing about engineering. You can always make your projects better somehow. That doesn't mean that your first design is bad, though. It just means that there's more to learn. So I want to hear from you how you think we could improve our design. Grab your hand warmers from the last activity and start running some tests. What can you do to make your hand warmers last even longer? Do you think that you should add more iron or water, or is there something else? We recommend only changing one thing at a time, so you'll know exactly exactly what part of the hand warmers was responsible for your new results. Use a chart to write down what you did, and then come back to this video and let us know what worked the best. Thanks for experimenting with us, and have fun!